Good morning, my name's Jeffrey, and I'm so glad you're here. I have been sewing for a few years now, and I've recently become interested in the trend of history bounding. So a little while ago, I was at Rose Hill Cemetery here in Chicago, which has a lot of Civil War history to it, and I came up with the idea of history bounding a Union Civil War fatigue outfit. I wanted to do the fatigue uniform because it's the simplest, and uh, I'm just trying to get my toes wet here, figure out what I'm doing. Uh, and I thought it would be fun to film the process and share it. This is actually, the third time I have filmed this intro, uh, as I've learned what I'm doing more and more, figuring out cameras and things, and looking back on my previous recording attempts, they were pretty rough. So there will be points in this video where things just aren't done well, uh, which is fine, you know, it's a learning process. I'm enjoying myself quite a bit, actually, more than I thought I would. So to do this project, I'm gonna be making four garments uh, using mostly timeless stitches patterns. So starting with a pair of drawers, I feel like you should start from the ground up. Can't go wrong with that. For the shirt, I am using a vintage pattern, not a historic one. The historic shirts are kind of billowy pirate shirt looking things, and that's not exactly what I'm going for. I do want to be able to wear these clothes in my modern everyday life as much as possible. So I'm going with this vintage shirt, which is still pretty cool, and I think I will enjoy making it. Um, I will be making a pair of trousers using this pattern, and the thing I'm looking forward to the most, I will be making a sack coat using this pattern. So to get started today, I will be making the drawers. I will be using a linen cotton blend fabric that I got from Vogue Fabrics in Evanston, Illinois. This was originally uh, an oatmeal color. I dyed it gray. I will show you that process here in a bit. Uh, I'm Like I said, I'm re-recording this the third time or second time re-recording, uh, something like that. Uh, so this was originally an oatmeal color. I dyed it gray uh, and I've already cut out the trousers or already cut out the drawers from it. Now there's a lot of work to do, so let's get busy. Okay, so I've got my pattern traced and cut out. I've got my fabric prepared. I overcast the edges to keep it from fraying and put it to the washer and dryer. Now I do want these to be a wearable item and not just you know something costume or for one specific outfit. So I think I'm gonna treat them sort of as a lounge pant. Uh, and I'm gonna dye them gray so they match better with the black trim and buttons. So I'm gonna get started on the dyeing process now. All right, ready to start dyeing. So I've got the pre-dissolved dye. Got a cup of salt, and got a teaspoon of dish liquid. Mix it all together. This is the hottest water I could get out of my tap. So I have uh, two and a half pounds of fabric, and this dye calls for one box of dye for every pound of fabric. Um, I just went with two boxes of dye because uh, I'm all right if it's not super dark. I wanted a lighter gray, so let's see how that comes out. In goes the fabric. Trying not to dye my hands, since I'm supposed to be wearing gloves. She's got time for directions. All right, I'm gonna stir this for 30 minutes and see what the heck happens. Okay, so I'm ready to eat my lunch, but I think this fabric is as dark as I need it to get. Um, I thought I was going to be clever and not wear gloves and just use tongs to stir it, but now I realize somehow I've got to drain this water. Um, <laughs> hopefully I can fish the plug out with my tongs. Isn't that clever? No dye on my hands. Don't know how long it's going to take for this to drain. I'm going to rinse it, um, and then I'll show you the final fabric. Okay, after the dyeing, the fabric was rinsed, washed, dried, and ironed. I'm super happy with the color I got out of the dye, although it did have the audacity to leave little red spots here and there. Um, that might have had something to do with me not dissolving the dye properly. Who knows? But it's a pair of underwear, so I'm just going to keep live, laugh, loving. I'm not going to let it get me down. 
So it's time to move on to cutting out my pattern pieces. Due to a moderate level of incompetence, I lost the footage from when I actually started to sew. What I did was make the front fly incorrectly, but I realized what I did wrong, and I realized I've been making the same mistake on previous sewing projects, so I won't make it again going forward, which is a bonus. Uh, then I sewed the front two pieces together at the crotch seam, and now I'm ready to move on to the back yoke. I just sewed my back panel together at the uh, center back seat. Uh, this area takes a lot of stress, so I used a triple stitch setting on my machine to do it, and that's going to give a nice thick seam, but it also allows a little bit of stretch to it, so I can move without uh, popping a stitch. I got the back yokes attached. I finished the side seams and did another final fitting when I did that. I attached it to the waistband. Now it's time to um, do the buttonholes and add buttons, and then hem the pant legs. All right, I hope this shows up. I've got my uh, vintage Kenmore buttonhole attachment set up here, and uh, I'm about to make a buttonhole. And go over it once more. Yes, thank you. You did a good job. That's a pretty buttonhole. The drawers are finished. I made the buttonholes. I sewed the buttons on. I made a couple of little eyelets on the back yoke pieces and made a tie out of twill tape. I just did a simple rolled hem on the pant legs. I'm going to try to get these red spots out now if I can. We'll see how that goes. Um, then I'm going to wash them and dry them one last time and then do a final try on. Okay, I'm in the finished pair of drawers and I gotta say I like them a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect coming from a modern perspective being used to smaller, tighter underwear. Uh, these come all the way up to my belly button, hit all the way down at the ankle, not a stretch material. Uh, the pattern did say I could use a type of stretch cotton that was available at the time, but I went with a linen cotton blend, and you know what, it's still really comfortable. Um, I didn't know what to expect from this high-waisted fit. Um, I was worried that I would either have to keep tugging it up to keep it up, or it would be super tight and restrictive. Um, actually not the case at all. It sort of works with the natural bone structure of my hips to stay up comfortably. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I think the modern fit of the low waist is actually much worse about either being too loose and giving you plumber's crack and like that terrible diaper butt, or being too tight because you have a belt cinched super tight to keep them from falling down. So the high waisted fit is a surprise hit. I don't know if I'm going to be wearing it around town anytime soon, just because it is so strikingly different compared to modern fashion standards. But I was a little bit worried about the Civil War trousers pattern, and I thought I might make a modern style of lower waisted pants instead. But now I know that I'm comfortable with this fit, you know, it doesn't feel so bad to wear. I am going to go through with the historic high-waisted trouser pattern. I made these a little bit tighter than the pattern calls for, uh, but they're still very comfortable. I can move around very well in them. And it got me thinking about what the preferred fit of the time would have been. Now, I know the pattern calls for them to be very loose-fitting, and any pictures or illustrations I've been able to find of drawers from this era show them with a loose fit as well. But was that just because in a military context, that's what they were issued, so that's what they lived with? Uh, military clothing is notorious for having bad fits. Uh, outside of a military context, sometimes, you know, guys wear underwear for a lot longer than they should. So are these illustrations showing guys who've been wearing the same pair of underwear for five years and is just stretched all the heck? Uh, <laughs> who knows? Um, I can definitely see how if you're out doing manual labor all day or in a battle, 
how it'd be nice to have a loose fit that doesn't restrict movement, allows airflow, keeps things cool. Uh, I can definitely see the case for that. But I'm also thinking there might be a case for having tighter fitting drawers. Having the fabric closer to your skin could help wick away sweat, um, keep things from sticking together, keep things relatively where they're supposed to be. I have to wonder if there wasn't a variation in fit preferences then, just like there is now. You know, some guys prefer briefs, some guys prefer boxers, uh, different things for different events. <laughs> Um, not something I ever expected to be thinking about when I was making this, you know. But once I started making these and wearing them, I started getting more in the mindset of the people who worn them then. And I also started thinking about my modern clothing in a larger context, which is kind of neat. This is a little bit deeper contemplation than I was expecting to have when I decided to make a pair of old underwear. Uh, but I'm enjoying it and it gets me excited to move on with the process, making a shirt, trousers, and a fatigue blouse, you know. What sort of random thoughts are going to percolate through my mind? What am I going to think about? You know, how will the historic clothing patterns affect my perception of my own modern clothing? Uh, it's a really cool process, so I'm excited to move on. Thank you all so much for watching my very first YouTube video. I am actually refilming this recap a few weeks after I finish the drawers, so I've had the opportunity to wear them a few times, get comfortable in them. I like them a lot still. Um, I actually refilmed the intro to this video too after I finished the drawers uh, and I noticed that I left the finished drawers on the table behind me in the intro. Uh, so if you came here for continuity you are in the wrong place but uh, this video and this ongoing project have been a learning process for me. I'm figuring out how to use the camera, how to set up the microphones, get lighting correct, how to edit, all that good stuff. Uh, and there's been a steep learning curve but it's a really fun process. And I, I'm steadily improving, I hope. Um, like I said, I am a few weeks in the future from finishing the drawers, and I've actually already finished the next project, which will be making this shirt. Now, I will start this shirt with a white cotton poplin, which I no longer have, but you will see in the intro to the next video. Um, and I will end up with the shirt I'm wearing, but there's a whole process uh, before I get there, and you won't know anything about it until the beginning of the third video, which I'm about to film. Uh, and in that video, I am making these trousers using uh, this cotton twill. So again, sorry if it's kind of weird. I'm all over the place, but uh, I'm having fun. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the future.